All right, guys, so it's time to do the axles on my RV. Um, we just got them in. Um, I bought these. Uh, these were custom made, um, but I ordered them through um, RW Trailer Parts in, I believe it's Linthicum Heights, Maryland. They were about $1,500, including freight, which I think was about $250 um, plus tax. Um, so, you know, it was right around 15, I want to say like 1550 delivered. And, um, I did go with the easy, uh, easy lube things. However, I did notice two things so far without even, um, unstrapping them is that there is quite a bit of scratching around the backing plates. Not that's going to affect anything at all, but I did notice it. And over on this side... I am missing one so I don't know if this fell out in the truck that um, my co-worker actually brought these up to me so I'll have to check on that but it's just a cap that goes over so you have like a grease fitting right there so you don't have to like, take it all apart to, to grease it so I thought it was like 25 bucks extra per axle so an extra hundred dollars but that's all included in that price we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get these taken off of here all right, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get one of these jacked up and get the wheels off. Okay, so I got both wheels off of the rear axle. And I'm just kind of looking at what I got here. So the brakes are wired up on the left side and they run through the axle to the other side. So you only have to make, um, I guess, two connections on either side. So before wire connections in total, it's just a energizing electromagnet. So probably just gonna cut this wire like right here. I'll probably just get another jack under, so I have a jack under both sides and we're just gonna unbolt the u-bolts right here and they should be free well it'll be free but we won't be able to get it out from between the springs so i guess we're gonna have to unbolt the spring from probably this side and let it slope down i might actually do that first actually because um, it'll it'll stay attached over here so hopefully i can get this unbolt it without breaking anything. I mean, it's no big deal with brakes, just replace the bolt, right? I'm looking at this and I'm almost willing to say it's gonna be really easy, but I don't wanna jinx myself. And just to uh, make sure everybody understands why I'm replacing these. Um, so this is a 99 RV, Fleetwood something. And um, Fleetwood, I guess, is a big enough company that they actually had custom made uh, axles built for them and these were 2800 pound axles and these were I guess used a lot during probably the 80s and 90s but in 99 they actually discontinued this axle and so therefore now that it's 20 years later you cannot get brake drums for it anymore you can get brake pad or brake shoes I guess because they're probably used on other 10 inch drums but on this particular axle I tried everything I could not get a new drum uh, one of them is cracked I could not find any used ones I contacted this guy who is who I actually ordered the new ones from and uh, he checked everything you know there he's like there's just really no market for used ones you're not gonna be able to find them your only real option is to replace the whole axle and that was about six months ago when I realized that. So I kind of waited through the winter, checked a few more places. There's just nothing. I, I only needed one. And because I could not find the one, I had to spend 15 plus hundred dollars on two brand new axles. But the upside to that is I will have brand new everything, new brakes, new, you know, um, hubs, bearings, the electromagnets, all that stuff is all brand new. Um, they, you can only get, 30 like a 3500 pound axle so I, this vehicle 
went from being a 5,600 pound gross vehicle weight, you basically just do 2,800 times two. So now it can handle, at least the axles can now handle 7,000 pounds. So it's being upgraded, which is good. Um, you know, obviously there's other things that limit the gross vehicle weight. I mean, the springs and all that kind of stuff too. But, you know, I've actually taken weight out of this thing more than I've added any weight to it. Um, but like, you know, down the road, if I like wanted to um, redo the roof, um, I'm not sure how much you guys know about these things, but they're, they're really pretty flimsy, especially when they say that they're lightweight. Like this thing looks big, but, um, you know, without any like luggage or whatever you take with you, um, this thing is only like 3,800 pounds or something like that. Yeah, so the gross vehicle weight was 5,800 pounds, which is like the maximum it could ever have. And then, uh, okay, it doesn't say on here. Yeah, gross axle weight 2,800. So that's gonna be changing to 3,500. Um, it might be inside where it showed the unloaded weight. I think it was like 38 or right around 4,000 pounds. So it's not really that heavy. Um, so I took the refrigerator out of this thing. Um, now I'm just rambling on now. We're just gonna do an axle video. So anyway, that's where I'm at. Um, I'm gonna see if I can just get two jacks under there, unbolt the spring, and then unbolt the U-bolts and um hopefully not have to replace the u-bolts you know looking i probably should have just replaced them but we're we're gonna see all right so where i'm at is i have everything pretty much disconnected for the rear um it's kind of just resting on the jack on this side so i just cut the wires for the brakes i took this um bolt out right here um, I would actually recommend you take the u-bolt the u-bolt uh, joint uh, yeah nuts out first just so you have like something that's like rigid in place once I once you take this out this thing kind of just wants to move around and it's a little harder to um, take these nuts off this side is pretty much just completely free just resting on the jack and then over here pretty much the same thing I my uh, jack right here is actually bad. It's not lifting anything. So I've, <laughs> I found a little scissor jack in the trunk of the um, car. And I've got this, this spring sitting on that. I've got a, like a Harbor Freight dolly under there that um, I think will be fine. This, these things are not really that heavy. The only thing is that it's going to want to kind of roll. Um, so I got this side out. All the U-joint. U, uh, U nuts are off and we're gonna try lowering this thing down and sliding it out basically it just kind of rolled down as i expected it would Got it out. I'm gonna go see if I can get some new U-bolts because um, I just don't really think I should reuse these. I mean, to me, you know, these are pretty rusty and you know, probably a little bit weak after all these years. So I think this will be fine, and I think this is all good enough. But U-bolts, I'll see if I can get some new ones. And I think I'm gonna compare these to the new ones just to make sure that they're the right width all right so we've got the new one just kind of set up in there um, you can kind of get it to you know I rolled it in there on the dolly and I was kind of able to get it to where the spring seat on the other side was just sitting on the spring so that kind of kept it vertical where it wasn't just wanting to like 
flop over. Um, so I've pretty much done it all by myself. My brother did kind of help me a little bit, but I really didn't need it because I was able to kind of guide it in there on the dolly. Um, I just kind of loosely have the the U joints. I wanted to actually replace them, but they're not easy to find locally. I checked like three places. Um, uh, you know, I think Advance Auto, um, Tractor Supply, TSC, and uh, Home Depot, and all of them didn't have anything that would work for a trailer. So I'm going with what I've got because I went on Amazon and I think I could buy them, but I wouldn't have them for like a week, and I'm just I'm not doing that. I'm just getting it done. You know, I guess I could go in and replace these down the road if I wanted to, but. Um, and then the other issue is that somehow I lost one of my nuts. Yeah, it's unfortunate. One of these right here, there's no reason that it should be missing. I literally took them off and they should stay be, be right here, but it, it disappeared. I've got the one for the three bolt right there, three here, four on that side, and that's it. Um, you know basically but when you're putting these back on you know you, you can kind of rest it on this is like a flat area that it kind of will will st be stable um you want to make sure that your dowels line up there's a dowel right there and then also on the bottom of the uh let's see if i can right in the middle there's like a a bolt with a nut that goes through the springs. I think it just holds the springs together. Um, on the other side, for whatever reason, I, I unscrewed it because I only saw it. I didn't notice it on the side, but you don't have to take that off. That just goes right through this plate on the bottom. So leave this center one alone. I'll have to get that screwed back in on the other side. But you just want to make sure that they all line up because that's like your alignment of the axle. So you don't like dog track or anything like that. You're going to see it because it's going to sit up like this one's kind of still sitting up high. But it is in that hole. It's not like off center or anything. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, I got to find this nut. I mean, I've already been to Home Depot three times today. So um, I don't feel like going back tonight. Um, but we'll see. At least I can see it's, it's doable. Um, you know, all I got to do is just connect the... The wire right there bolt it up it's going to be probably a balancing act to try to get this to line back up in here but i'm sure it's been done it's doable should be just fine um, everything seems to be pretty good as far as fitment so far i mean we'll see what it looks like when it's on the ground i think it might be kind of cool if it's just a little bit lower you know have a little bit lower center of gravity i can take those turns a little faster <laughs> um Anyway, so that's where we're at right now. All right, guys. Um, it's about a week and a half later on the RV axle replacement. Um, I decided to actually do the right thing and buy new U-bolts um, and uh, spring shackle bolts, um, at least the ones that I'm actually replacing. So these came from amazon um although i think it's through an independent seller so i got two sets this is one set right here um these are specifically for this application they're not universal or anything like that um these are if i remember correctly they're two and three eighths inch arc and they're five and a half inches long i believe that they are half inch thick although it doesn't look like half an inch i don't know whatever it is um I'll, I can leave a link in the description for what I got. Um, so this set right here was about 20 bucks. So I got two of them, got another one right here. I'm also replacing the spring shackle bolts that I am removing. So it's gonna be four of them. Basically the ones that go right here, I'm not worrying about any of that because I'm not taking any of that apart. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, I feel like if I took it apart, I should probably go ahead and replace it because they're going to be retorqued and re-stretched re or, you know, whatever happens. You know, they weren't that expensive. So um, I got another uh, four more of those with nuts, which I can see are slightly oval shaped. I guess that's their way of uh, 
oval shaped on this side, not on this side. So that's their way of making these lock lock nuts. Essentially, there's multiple ways of making something not un, unscrew. Um, I may put a little bit of Loctite on those, we'll see. The torque for these guys, I looked it up, is 65 foot-pounds. I'm saying that right now to help myself remember it. I will mention it again later when we get them on. You want to kind of tighten them up in a like a crisscross pattern and probably in a few state, you know, steps, kind of snug them down. And also just take note of how many threads are showing on the bolts that you're taking off. Um, you know, that way you kind of, if you've got one that's like way longer, you know, it sticks out from the below the nut a lot further than you have on the other axle, you know, you're doing something wrong. Um, and also a little word to the wise, when you're doing something like this, don't do what I did. And I knew, I knew better. So what I did was I lowered the front of the trailer down. Some of you may already see what I'm going to be talking about here. You lower the front of the, or what I, what I did, what you should not do. I lower the front of the trailer down. I came back here and put jack stands under the back of it. And then I came back up to the front and cranked it back up. And my theory was to try to take some of the weight off of the, the axles. I knew you're not supposed to do that. And I'm not sure if this happened because of that or if this just happened because it is just was going to happen anyway because obviously, you know, it's a RV. It, it, it had some water in there at some point. This is not wet, but it's a little, little chewy, shall we say. So I kind of blew a zipper right here. Um, so hopefully when I get it back down, that'll kind of close up a little bit. So basically what, what happened is the, the frame got a little bit, it's a little bit bowed in the middle is my guess. You know, you probably couldn't actually see it just looking at it. You know, it's probably, yeah, I can maybe see it just the hair. So you don't want to do that. They, they tell you, make sure that all four wheels are on the ground. Um, when you are setting up your your RV, your trailer, and you basically use the jack stands and the jack in the front just to kind of stabilize it. You, know, you want to get everything kind of evenly distributing the weight all the way around. And so I made a mistake and did that. That's the only place I see anything um, split like that. You can kind of see how it sticks out a little bit up there. So I think that's just from the stress of the frame flexing just a little bit. So what I would probably recommend you do is don't, you know, don't really do anything more than what you would normally do to um, set up your RV at like a campsite. You know, just, just kind of brace the front and the back and just lift up the one axle, take your wheels off and just let the axle hang down leave the other axle alone. Like don't try to lift that one up at all. Or if you, I mean, you could, you could lift up the axle itself, but to try to keep the weight evenly distributed, I would just pretty much just leave the other axle on the ground. And I mean, that's, that's how mine is, but I guess there's enough of it being picked up. You know, the whole thing is probably been lifted up an inch or so, maybe two inches on the front and the back. So the weight is coming off of this part a little bit. Just leave it set, settled down on the one axle. You're not going anywhere, so it, it should be okay to, you know, kind of try to support that weight and then just unbolt your other one and slide it out. Just kind of do it that way, just to try to minimize the flex on the frame. So that's my, you know, learn from my mistake moment there. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and, um, this is the new axle already in here. I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling it with uh, the new hardware here. Yeah, I kind of like assembled the old axle or the old U-bolts in here. Um, axle is still kind of resting on my dolly in there. These are, what is that, three? It's smaller than that. I well, thought I had the right sizes over here. Maybe the new bolts are three quarters. 
Yeah, the new ones are kind of three quarters, but the old ones are a little bit smaller. I did get the garage cleaned up. I got all my tools put away. And I am working on hopefully some kind of video of the John Deere Tough Torque uh, rebuild. Unfortunately, my SD card got corrupt, but I think I might be able to get the, some of the footage back. I don't think it's going to be a complete video, unfortunately. All right, so the old ones are 11 sixteenths. Let me see. So the reason why I actually ended up deciding to replace these, I'd say half of the reason was that I actually lost one of the nuts, one of the nuts off the bottom of the U-bolt. Uh, and, you know, I was like, okay, that's a sign. You know, you, you shouldn't reuse things like this because these actually stretch a little bit when you torque it down. And, you know, I mean, this is a pretty important piece. This is not the kind of thing you want to try to save 50 bucks on. Um, I also tried ordering these things from eTrailer.com. I used them last year for a few things, and, you know, I would say that I was relatively pleased with the service, and I understand that right now, um, you know, we're going through some tough times. And, um, you know, getting things supplied and all that is, is a, a problem. So I get that. And I, honestly, that's probably the whole issue that I've had with them. But I've had a couple issues where they would say on their website that something was in stock. And then my place to order, I get an email the next day saying, oh, whoops, sorry, it's not. And, oh, but by the way, we have this, uh, you know, in this case, this set of U-bolts, if you would like to order these instead. Otherwise, it's going to be, you know, two weeks before you get these, and then two weeks come, and then, you know, oh, well, actually, no, it's going to be another two weeks. That's what I ran into last year when I was trying to get drums for the old axles, which, of course, that's a whole other story. I couldn't actually get them anyway. Um, and this time, you know, they sent me this email, which I did later learn was an automated email, even though it had a person's name. Um, and they were saying... It was like a square bolt. It wasn't, you didn't have the arc. It was like saying, you know, you're buying brake pads for a Toyota Camry and they're out of stock. So they get an email saying, well, we have these brake pads for a Honda Accord. You know, we can ship these out to you right away. It's like, it does me absolutely no good. You might as well just, you know, just, just send me a screwdriver and it would be more useful. So that kind of ticked me off a little bit. I did kind of reply back to the email and wasn't particularly nice um and they were also charging a hundred and it was going to be a hundred and twenty dollars for what you just saw right here which i got ended up getting for um like 45 i think it was for for the the two sets of u-bolts enough for two axles and then the four um spring shackle bolts it was like 45 dollars shipped it was going to be 120 dollars through them and i get that you know there's customer service it, it, it's all the stuff that a company like that's going to do over Amazon but I could have gotten the exact same part for I think one set of u-bolts with the plates you know it comes with the, the new bottom plates too it was $28.99 from Amazon through like a third-party company and it was like $45.99 from e-trailer for the exact same thing it wasn't like it was one was like a Chinese version and the other was whatever you know like it was literally the exact same thing for like 50 percent more or something whatever that works out to be so that kind of pissed me off too so i was like yeah i'm not messing with them anymore i, I think i don't think it's worth the i'm not paying that much more for the exact same thing so i'm um, looking at this now now that i've had my rant over with i think what i'm going to do now that the axle is in here i'm going to try to get this bolt back in so it brings this whole thing back up and i don't i don't have to like be fighting it down here on the ground so this is at least not going to roll right now it's in here um so i should be able to pick this up and get this in here it's actually too low 
Yeah, it's like that. These things are not that heavy, these axles. I, I actually uh, had one over here on the other side. Actually, let me show you real quick. And if anybody actually needs these, I'll hang on to these for a while. You know, these are obsolete axles. And one of them is completely good and usable. I even have a set of brake shoes for it. Um, the whole issue was that one of these uh, had a cracked drum and I couldn't get the replacement drum for it. But just to show you, it's very, very manageable. I mean, hell, I can keep it and use it as a, a barbell or some shit. You know, when you order these things, they come on a pallet like that. And the guy that I... Uh, I think he's the owner of the um, RW trailer parts. So just a small, small business. Um, he said that, you know, you have to have a forklift and you can't have it delivered to a residential address. So I had it delivered to my, my uh, work, which I work at a, a, a car dealership. So I just had it delivered to their parts department. And, um, you know, I said, we carry around full Toyota Tundra and Tacoma frames without a forklift so we can handle it so yeah it was no big deal at all because we don't actually have a forklift because <laughs> they wouldn't want to spend the money on it all right so let's see what we can do here to get this lined up probably gonna want to swivel the jack around a little bit Yeah, so right now, the weight, there is a lot of weight on the other axle, which kind of causes the, the pivot in the middle to swing down. So, I may have to jack it up there, as opposed to right here. Um, let's see. It kind of wants to stay this way right here like this this spring is all the way up and this is all the way down so that's going to cause this whole thing to want to be this way so bringing this over i'm going to be fighting the weight on that axle so instead of doing that i might have to try to jack it up over, over here sure how this would be done in an actual shop because i don't know that you really i guess you can put a trailer on a lift but you'd have to have a pretty big lift oh i hear everything creaking Floating between those two. I need you to come up. So all it wants to do is just lift it straight. Oh, maybe. Oh, no, not sketchy at all. All right, so now that that's like that, I might need to get another jack over here. Although I might be able to pick it up. 
yeah, I can kind of pick it up, but it's not, it's not lined up. So if I go back down slightly, so it pivots. Yeah, I'm gonna need to get another jack under this one. Unfortunately, all I have is a scissor jack out of the Camry. Just the whole set. Okay, so now I got it at the right level. So can I? Yeah, see, it might just be a matter of tweaking it. Let that one down a little bit. Let this down a little bit. So pretty close. You can actually get new bushings for these two, which I probably should have done, but you know, I'm not, it's not going to affect anything really. I mean, it's not going to go anywhere. It, it, it might, the only thing that I can really think of it would do is there would be possibly a little bit of a rattle, but I'm not going to be riding in this thing when it's going down the road, so I don't care about a rattle. Um, they're, and they weren't expensive, but I kind of thought trying to get it out of there and a new one pushed in would probably be more trouble than it's worth. So I didn't do it. Let's see if it goes in here. Like butter. These actually have some splines on this side, I guess, to kind of wedge it into there. So you can kind of take a little mallet or something and give it a couple of love taps. I don't have to, I probably just pull it in when you tighten it down. Alright, that's in relatively far. Sorry for the noise. Let me look up. Um, see, there's a torque spec for those. So it says if you're using 916 shackle bolts. I'll have to measure these to see. Okay, it's funny. These look thicker. The only difference I saw, which doesn't seem like it matters at all, is for whatever reason these had a smaller diameter thread and nut on the end. But the hole that it goes through is, you know, the same size on either side. So it, it goes all the way through. So I didn't really see a problem with using these. I mean, other than that, they're pretty much the same. It is the same diameter. It looks like a half inch, but let me see if I can measure this. All I could find was this. Yeah, they're half inch. Yeah, very accurate measuring device here. So they're half inch. So the old Google machine says half inch would be 45 to 70 foot pounds. <laughs> That's a pretty big range. So just make them tight basically. Um, probably the most important thing I would say, since there are bushings in there, is that you don't want to tighten it until it's actually at ride height. So you want to basically get everything put together, just have it in there, you know, kind of get it snugged. Actually, you don't even get it snug. You really just kind of want it to be pretty much just loose and then just let it settle down ideally you'd probably want to move it back and forth a little bit um, just just a few feet would be enough but with a trailer I'd say you don't really want to worry too much about that um, as long as it's at ride height because again these bushings are not really such a big deal um, and then you want to tighten it once it's actually setting down at ride height and the reason for that more so if you have rubber bushings on a car is when you have this up in the air it hangs down so the like this angle right here is going to be lower and if you tighten it down 
what happens is when you go down to be at right height, it wants to twist the rubber bushing and it's just gonna wear out a lot sooner. So you want it to be at right height, then tighten it down so that when it's at its normal resting position, everything is tight um, and, and you know, at its uh, like center point, if you will. And then when it flexes, you know, it'll move either direction, but that's only kind of momentary uh, instead of just always being twisted and like bound up in one position. So that's what you want to do whenever you're tightening down anything that has a bushing in it. Get you over here where you can see a little bit better. The nuts are seven eighths, and the bolt itself is a thirteen sixteenths. Not the <laughs> sockets over here. Relatively tight, not you know, basically like okay, so it's it's seated. I guess we'll say. I'm gonna go around and do it on the other side too. Um, I'll stop the camera. I'm just gonna show you one side. All right, so this side went in pretty easily. Um, same thing. Just this side came up a lot easier than the other side did. I guess because the axle already was kind of raised up some. Just jacked it up here to kind of even out the weight and put this jack under here to lift this up and, and push the bolt right through. So that's just snug down. Um, I have not put any U-bolts on this side yet. There is a, like a dowel um, that you need to line up right on the bottom of the axle right here. There's a hole in there. So you wanna make sure that Get that to fit down in there. Just drop those over. And we're gonna take this out. Brought the bolts over, but I didn't bring over the plate. So you can look at the old one and see which way they go. But the little flanges go down. And I remember. Yeah, there was a, on this one, for whatever reason, there's a, a nut on the bottom of the springs that I loosened just on this one. So I'm going to tighten that back up. I forget what size it was, though. Well, what size is it? That's 5 eighths. And that was 9 sixteenths. Oh, it is a 9 sixteenths. So, I'm not sure. So basically, I loosened this by mistake. I didn't have to loosen it. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Yeah, so it's just, it's what's holding the springs together and there's no, like hex or anything 
on top of that. So I guess I'm just gonna have to get some vice grips and hold that still while I tighten it down. Don't think it should matter much, even if it was left loose because the U-bolts are really gonna kind of hold everything in place also. It basically just serves as that dowel to line up your axle so your alignment is correct. And just kind of keep them together. Like when the spring is not in the, the trailer, that's like the only thing that's holding it together. And there's like a little band right here too. And I'm just saying that I don't really know for sure if, it, you know, obviously you want everything to be tight, but this seems to be working. never need to be loosened in the first place. Right, so we got a lock washer and a bolt. So since these have lock washers, these are basically, you can put them on either way, it doesn't matter. And these also have a center hole, which basically just goes around that uh, that nut that I just tightened. So I probably want to. So it's all the way up. This is where having a couple sets of hands would come in handy, but. I think most people only have two hands. We're pulling the plate up, pulling the washer up a little bit. Yeah, well, just get them started and then you can kind of tweak it. And you want to make sure that the U bolts are just kind of like, you know, straight up and down, not like cocked or anything like that. I think once you tighten them, they'll probably correct themselves. But it's good to get everything started where there's no stress or binding or anything. So all on there, snug down. These are three quarter inch nuts on here. So, in order to torque these, we're going to have to get under the new axle and lift that up a little bit. So, I'm going to let this down. Get it off the ground a little bit. I'll get my torque wrench. All right. So this is actually a half inch torque wrench, and I just have a reducer on it because I don't have any uh, standard half inch deep sockets. 
And you will need a deep socket to get over that, I think. And you may be able to get away with it, but we're just going to do it this way. It's not rocket science. We're going for 65. But if it was a little bit tighter or just a little bit looser, it's not going to make that much of a difference. All right, so you can see that 60 on the barrel, and we're gonna turn it one, two, three, four, five. Lock it down. They're still pretty loose, so. to go so I'm gonna kind of do that and I'm gonna come over here diagonally across and just kind of bring that one up to about the same I think these u-bolts actually were slightly longer because I'm looking at the, the thread sticking out on the existing ones and I don't think that there was that much sticking out but let me compare I think these were might have been like a half inch longer yeah So they're a half inch longer, so there's gonna be another half of an inch roughly sticking out below. Um, doesn't affect anything as long as it's, you know, the threads do come up here further, but we're not gonna be needing threads all the way up there, I don't think. Yeah, no, because it's pretty thin plate. So you should see more sticking out than we had before. Other than that, they're exactly the same. You know, they, the axles on here were 2,800 pounds. I guess they could have been slightly, I think it is actually slightly smaller diameter too. So I definitely did want to upgrade these. I can't, you know, some of that could just be the corrosion, but definitely I think a little bit, probably like a 16th of an inch thinner. But the arc matches this. Basically everything here is designed for the 3,800 pound axle that I'm getting. Um, so it's an upgrade. You know, it's no heavier, so the springs, which I'm sure are probably technically still rated for, you know, slightly less weight, which is okay, because I don't intend on having this thing really any heavier than it was. But. The main thing is you just want all of the threads to be sticking out evenly underneath. You don't want to have one side, you know, much further than the other because then you're putting extra stress on it that you don't want. I'm going to go kind of slowly so you actually feel the click. There you go. You want to hear that click? Come back to the diagonal one across. Click. I'm like just far enough off of the driveway so I'm not skinning my knuckles swinging this thing. Get my workout today. You can see how you really are stretching these out, so they really should be a one time use only thing. There we go. And just go back and double check them all. somewhere I'm gonna 
come over here to this the the center right here and i'm going to bring this up to where it's it's level and i'm going to tighten that down like that because that's going to be pretty close it's not going to be ideal but i think for this case because we're just kind of dealing with like a, a polyurethane i'm not even sure what that, that just it's just like a little shim in there really it's not like a full rubber bushing and it's already pretty knackered looking um i'm just gonna do the best i can to level it out i guess if i really wanted to now that that's level i can put this under here and then jack this up to where this because this is still a lot lower here so we got this level this piece now we're going to jack it up down here to bring this up to be in the same orientation as this and i think we'll be good enough to take that down Just about like that should be fine. Mm, yeah. Now I can't get it out, which I don't need to really, I guess. But okay, so that was just like 45 to 70. We're gonna go with 50, I think. See what that does for us. I don't think it really matters which when you turn if it's this one or the nut it would be easier to turn the nut except for the fact that it's on the back side um, than to turn the whole um, bolt and i guess it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to put a little bit of grease around that first because it is going to kind of move but we've already got it in there now do this at your own risk let me just put that disclaimer in what do I have on the other side? It was a uh, seven eighths. There you go. Of course, this is now going to be wedged in there. It actually still turns a little bit though. Oop. Let it rest against the ground instead of the. Don't know if it's really gonna make any difference. But... Yeah, that's 50 foot pounds, but you can actually still rotate the whole thing around a little bit. So maybe we should bump that up a little bit. That's 60. kind of wants to turn I mean it's not going to back off because it does have that you know kind of a oval shaped you know it, you actually want that to kind of no not really you don't really want it to pivot seventy it is. 70 was the upper end of the range. All right, that's as far as it's supposed to go. And what I'll do is um, I'll check it after I've driven it a little bit and just see you know, probably just retorque everything once it's been shaking around and driven a little bit and just make sure everything is is good with it so that is one quarter of it fully assembled i was watching another youtuber this morning uh legit streetcars 
and one of the tips that he said YouTube 101 or whatever whatever he said is always leave the camera rolling you never know what you're gonna catch I actually brought you over there over to the side too fast because I want to put the the wheel back on this side while I'm still got the jack over here let's see how, how much fun this is Backside, I didn't paint on my wheels, but I don't see that part. Yeah, I clean these again, but I think it still looks pretty good. So, the easy lube, I guess in theory, you're supposed to just be able to pop. These have caps in the end of them, but they kept falling out. So, I actually ended up gluing these into place. So, in theory, you should just be able to pop the cap off the end of your hub cap or center cap stick a grease gun in here well you can't pull it off but you're supposed to be able to pull this little rubber piece off stick a grease gun right in the, in the grease fitting there and lube up your axles so in my case I'm just going to have to take each wheel off and do it but it's an RV it's going to get driven very little so I'm not too worried about it but now the neighbors are cutting grass I could reuse the rims and tires. You know, I, I just bought the tires, they have no miles on them at all. I bought the lug nuts in the center caps and hang at the wheels. So I already put a lot of effort into these to then have to go and get new ones. I'm just gonna snug these. I'm not gonna go real crazy tight. I'm actually gonna torque these with the torque wrench. And then I'll have to retorque them once again back from the shop that I'm getting inspected at because they probably won't put the torque it properly. So yeah, so 21. Alright, I just snug for now. So we won't really be able to see the ride height till we get both of them on there. But, I mean, I can kind of see where the rear one is. Looks like it's about an inch higher than the other one. But until we get them both on there, we're not really gonna know. But I don't think it's gonna make any difference at all. I wasn't able to get the three inch drop. That it originally had, I can only get a four inch drop. So that's the only difference between the dimensions of the old versus the new. Oh. 
Well, I don't know how long that's been recording or not recording. I'm having SD card issues. But we just got these torqued down to 65. Now we're going to torque this to 70. I got that. 170. to hit your torque wrench on the ground, it really helps. We're just still way loose. It'd be easier if I had a long extension to bring it all the way out here, but I don't. I guess theoretically it could mess with the fork spec too, but. torquing everything after I've driven it you know a few miles just to make sure that everything is on there so now the only thing I have to do with this side is wire the brakes I'll show you what I'm gonna do it's gonna be really easy all right so this was the wire coming from the that's you know on the trailer and these are the two wires for the new brakes all we're gonna do is splice that together. These are already stripped. You can see they're both the same color because it doesn't matter which way you wire it. Even though in here there's two different colors. I'm gonna strip this back. I'm not sure what gauge it is. We'll start big. Seems like the 14 gauge worked fine. doing is just powering an electromagnet so it doesn't matter which way it goes which way the wires go that's not perfect all 
And then, I'll take one of these things. If I can get it out of the package. Just a crumb connector. Put it right over. Try to get it right in the middle of the sleeve that crimps it. And that's that. Um, this is a little bit of heat shrink, I think. So we're gonna try to see if we can melt that down, but let me do the other side. Where is it? There, there it is. Connected, and let's see if we can get this to work. I'm assuming this is heat shrink, although I could be wrong, and maybe not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess it's not. It doesn't matter. They're connected. You can wrap it up in electrical tape if you want, but it's pretty much how the old ones were. You just want, you know, want enough slack so the axle can move up and down. So that's it. That's one of the axles. I'm going to do the other one. I'm not sure if I have enough battery to film it, but I guess we'll see. <laughs>